Hello everyone, this is Philip Myers of PEMI Consulting. I'm on the SCAS, that's a subcommittee on above ground storage tanks of the American Petroleum Institute. We develop and maintain tank standards such as API 650 or the one we're talking about in these three modules, API 653. This is the first video of a three-part series on the important topic of tank bottom corrosion rates. There's a white paper on our website that describes the derivations of these models in detail. Why is this topic important? Well, first of all, taking the tank out of service costs lots of money and it requires a business interruption. If the interval is too short, then you're spending excess costs that you wouldn't need to spend otherwise and emissions are in excess of what they need to be. Too long and of course you could get a tank bottom leak and that wouldn't be good either. But the most important thing is that you understand what a corrosion rate is and what it is not. We are going to examine the corrosion rate model used by the fifth edition of API 653 as of 2020. A corrosion rate model is used to establish a corrosion rate. The corrosion rate in turn sets the maximum length of the operating interval between the current inspection and the next one. Although the API corrosion rate model is not mandatory, every inspection company uses it. In essence, it serves as the standard for determining corrosion rates. Although the rate of corrosion is complex and it's not really linear with time, many industries, including the petroleum industry, have settled on a simple model for corrosion. It's the simple standard linear corrosion rate model that says that corrosion depth is proportional to time. The linear corrosion rate model can be used to predict future corrosion. A fundamental aspect of the linear corrosion rate model is that corrosion must be measured at the same physical point since corrosion is rarely, if ever, completely uniform. Corrosion should be measured at fixed physical points over time, and these are called corrosion monitoring locations. To prevent penetration of a container like a pipe, a tank, or pressure vessel, we want to measure at the deepest point of corrosion that is observed. Doing so gives us the maximum corrosion rate and the time to penetration of the wall thickness. One would think that API 653 does it this way, <clears throat> but it doesn't. As we'll see, it's really a, a strange algorithm that's used to compute the corrosion rate. Like the Leaning Tower of Pizza, there are some technical problems associated with this current edition of API 653, in particular its corrosion rate model. The problem is that the API 653 corrosion rate model always underpredicts the common sense linear corrosion rate model, but not to worry. PEMI has come up with a check that will prevent you from using a corrosion rate that could actually cause you to end up having a leaking tank bottom. And I will say that the domain where the corrosion rate model of 653 is a problem is somewhat limited. So to recapitulate, there are two corrosion rate models, a 653 corrosion rate model that I would call an algorithm as opposed to a model, and then the standard linear corrosion rate model. The other significant point is that the 653 model always, always under predicts the corrosion rate when compared to the standard linear corrosion rate model. To show this graphically, the black rectangle is a chunk of the steel bottom where there is a pit or thinning. The x-axis represent time in years. The y-axis is corrosion depth. So corrosion rate is corrosion depth divided by time. If this is in mils and this is in years, then you get a corrosion rate in mils per year. Uh, this is measured during the internal inspection. So the standard linear corrosion rate model would take the deepest corrosion point, this point here. You would draw a line through it and the slope represents the corrosion rate. Now the 653 model uses the repair to thickness. That's the thickness 
below which, if it occurs, is repaired under the rules of uh, the repair methodology in 653. That means that the remaining thickness is at least as great as the red line everywhere in the tank bottom. But the problem is, is the corrosion rate in 653 is based on this red dot. It is based on the repair to thickness. And you can see that the corrosion rate is now reduced just by picking a different repair to thickness. You can get any corrosion rate you want. So if I have this repair to thickness, I have a lower corrosion rate, and yet a lower corrosion rate, and yet an absurdly low corrosion rate where the repair to thickness would be approaching the thickness of the original nominal thickness, which wouldn't be realistic or practical. So where do we go from here? Well, Module 2 gets into the details in more depth, and we'll be talking about why the API 653 corrosion rate model or algorithm is not really correct. But more importantly, what we do is we pre preserve the existing methods uh, by not changing them. In other words, by using the 653 methodology, but we provide a check to make sure that you know if and when your corrosion rate is too low such that you could get a hole in the tank bottom. So we go into that in Module 2. Thank you and we'll see you then.